All right, welcome back, physics students. I just wanted to show you a quick little example of um, just an, another thing that you could do with uh, this gravitational force equation. All right, now let's say that, um, let's go ahead and think of a, a scenario right here. So let's say that um, you have, uh, well, we've got to turn this one on, sorry about that. You have, um, you've built a robot and uh, let's say that you sent that robot to Jupiter, right? And so there's your robot right there. And you sent that robot to Jupiter, and he was doing fine, but it got hard, and so he died. Okay, there's your dead robot. And so you say, oh, no, I've got a dead robot. So here you are. You're over here on Earth. Let's make Earth green. So you're over here on Earth. And so um, you say, well, I'm going to have to build another robot which is able to drag this robot along the ground so I can drag him back to my spaceship. Here's your spaceship right here. All right? This is a this is a spaceship. It looks like a person. We'll make it a little bit more pointy here. There's your spaceship. So you're going to drag you need to drag your robot back to your spaceship. So so what you have to do is you have to um to figure out um, what is the force of friction going to be? And let's say that um, the Jupiter has a glass-like uh, surface, so you figured out that um, the coefficient of friction um, and the force of, or the actual uh, stuff on uh, on Jupiter is uh, is just like uh, glass, uh, freshly um, cut glass. <laughs> okay, so let's say that uh, that your robot that you sent to Jupiter was uh, 10 kilograms. Sorry, that says 10 grams. Let's say that he was 10 kilograms. Um, and let's say that you want to uh, be able to pull him at a constant force. And so let's say that on the Earth, you go ahead and you build a robot that's exactly the same size, a prototype like this dead robot, and you start to pull it on, on Earth. And you find that if you give it a force of 40 newtons, you can accelerate that robot at a good const, or you can, you can pull that robot along the glass surface at a constant uh, speed. And so this is good, and that's just the right constant speed that you need to be able to make it right up your ramp into your spaceship. All right, so um, so so what do you know? Um, and so he here's the thing. Jupiter, since it's so much bigger than Earth, is going to require more force than this 40 newtons. So you have to figure out then if, if it requires 40 newtons to pull the robot along on Earth, how many newtons or how much force is it going to require to pull him along on Jupiter? All right. Um, so here's what we know. We know that um, that it takes 40. So that's going to be, that's the force of friction on Earth. So we'll do force of friction E. So that's what that is. Uh, we know the kilograms is the mass of the robot. So we'll go mass of the robot um, right there. Um, we know what the mass of Jupiter is because we can just look that up on the chart. So the mass of Jupiter is actually 1.90 times 10 to the 27th uh, kilograms. So we'll do that. That's the mass of Jupiter. Um, let's see what else do we know. We know the radius of Jupiter. We know the radius of Jupiter is 7.15 times 10 to the 7th uh, meters. So that's, uh, that's what the radius of Jupiter equals. Um, and now these are all things that we can look up. We have just a little handy-dandy chart in our book. And uh, often uh, you'll have charts like that where you can look up these uh, masses and radiuses of any of the planets. Um, let's see, what else? Um, force normal we can figure out. Um, and um, so first of all, let's think about what sort of equations are we going to need. Well, this is a friction force equation, so we're probably going to need this one. The friction force equals the coefficient times the force normal. Um, so can we um, figure out what the force normal is here for, um, for this situation? Hang on one second. My, uh, my pen got a little stuck there, force normal. So, so here's force normal. Well, we can figure out force normal because we know that the gravity on Earth is uh, 9.8, um, and so we could figure out that um, 
that the force normal is going to be 9.8 times uh, uh, times the coefficient here, or 9.8 9 times the mass. So, um, so 98 newtons is going to be my force normal um, for my robot here on Earth. So we got uh, force normal. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so what else are we going to need? Um, well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, and think about what is the force normal going to be on Jupiter? Well, force normal, we understand, is going to be the force that's caused by the mass of the robot, right? Um, and the acceleration of gravity for Jupiter, okay? So that is going to be uh, of the force of gravity, right? Um, and so the, the force of gravity is going to equal, we know what the force of gravity equals, the force of gravity equals is going to equal g times the mass of the robot times the mass of Jupiter divided by the radius of Jupiter. This is uh, Newton's equation right here. So the force normal on Jupiter equals this right here. Um, now, what about the force of friction um, on Jupiter? So the force of, uh, of friction on Jupiter, which is what we want to solve for, is going to equal the coefficient of friction um, times the force normal on Jupiter. And we just figured out that the force normal on Jupiter is going to be different than that of what it is on Earth, but it's going to be equal to the gravitational force at the surface right here, which we can get for this problem right here. So let's go ahead and insert that right here. So, um, so this shouldn't be an equal sign right there. Sorry about that. So G times uh, the mass of the robot times the mass of Jupiter divided by the radius of Jupiter. So here we go. We're starting to to get an equation that's gonna that's gonna work for this. Um, now, what about the coefficient? Well, um, a coefficient is just a factor of uh, of friction, and the coefficient for the surface of Jupiter isn't going to be different than the coefficient for the same substance on Earth. So we could actually figure out the coefficient using our numbers from Earth. Um, so what's our force of uh, friction? We know that our force of friction is 40, right? 40 newtons. And that's going to equal the coefficient times our force normal, which we know is 98. So that means our coefficient is going to equal 0 0.408. So we could solve for that. Um, and... Uh, and so no matter what, if we use the numbers for Earth or the numbers for Jupiter, that coefficient is going to remain the same because that coefficient itself is just a property of the substance. Um, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with, um, with gravity or, or anything like that. Um, so it's actually just a property of the substance itself that's causing it to stick to the other thing. Um, so, so there we go. So we've got that. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we've got the force of uh, friction on Jupiter is going to equal 0 0.408. And let's go ahead and just put that in parentheses times uh, we got the force of gravity, which we know is a constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. The mass of the robot, we know, is 10 kilograms. The mass of Jupiter, we know, is uh, 1.90 times 10 to the 27th kilograms. And then down here, we have uh, the radius of Jupiter squared, so that's 7.15 times 10 to the 7th um, meters. Sorry, this should be squared up here. And so that's going to be squared. And so if, I'm gonna, if I go ahead and I multiply this all out and divide by this squared, I find that the force of friction on Jupiter is going to equal 101 newtons. Um, now there's other ways to do that. You could use um, the whole trick I showed you about solving for acceleration in the previous video in order to work the problem the other way. So there's actually a number of different ways to get to the answer of how much force would it take to move something on another planet if you know how much force it takes to move it on Earth. 
Um, so anyway, so while it takes 40 here, it's going to take more than double that uh, to move that robot on uh, on Jupiter. So hopefully this helps and kind of shows you a clever way that you can use and integrate all of the things or some of the other things that we've learned so far in previous chapters about friction force and coefficients and force normal and uh, understanding that the force of gravity here you know this this equation that Newton um, that Newton came up with right here is uh, is is force normal or it's force gravity, so it can kind of be used interchangeably in that way as well. So um, so that's very helpful. All right, well I uh, hope this helps and good luck on your physics problems.